No, oh, what are you no. doing? A little bit down there. Oh. Oh. oh! Let's go practice in training mode. Just a reminder that I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jplay underscore 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 Monday, Thursday, Saturday. Hope to see you guys there. Training mode is an awesome tool we have in Smash Bros. to be able to practice combos, learn new things, and just get a feel of a character. Sometimes training mode can be limiting and cause you to not know where to go next. In this video, I want to go over how you can effectively use training mode for your benefit. I personally on my Switch have the training mode mod pack, which makes training mode a lot more useful. However, even with basic training mode, you can still get a lot out of it if you put in the time and effort. When I go into training mode, I select the CPU with good combo weight, like Falcon has a great combo weight, sorry Falcon mains, set them to CPU level 9 so that I can actually at any point turn them on to act as a regular CPU and practice these combos and see if they will work in real time. So when I first go into training mode, I like to warm up with some movement options and practicing specific tech to specific characters. For example, with Banjo, he has a lot of his egg stuff, grenades, um, all those kind of different movement options. And so I like to go in and start practicing these different things so that I'm able to get into the flow and be able to start trying to find new things. So definitely just warming up basic movements and then double shots because this is specifically banjo tech but I need to be able to do this for other stuff. So we got instant cancels. Let's do some grenade. Just some different grenade stuff. See, I missed it, and that's why I like to warm up. You can do all kind of different things just so you can get in the groove and you're not messing stuff up. I know the really big part of warming up, like I said, is movement. I like to practice wave landing, even though a lot of times in Ultimate, wave landing in general is not really integrated into gameplay. It's really good just to practice movement and get your hands warm. Because it's important to have warm hands so that you're able to practice these things right from the beginning. And like, I like to practice, I like to practice B reverses off platforms. I like to practice all these B reverses. I like to just practice movement off stage stuff. So right when you go into training mode, take a couple of minutes just to practice warming up with character specific things, B reverses, um, different timings, just that your hands are ready, warm, and you're good to go. So the best thing about training mode is you should go in with a goal. Because if you go into training mode with a goal, you'll be able to have something to work towards. So you can bot review and then follow up bot review with training mode. It's really good that way. Because in my recent bot reviews, I've noticed my defensive uh, habits aren't the best. I need to find ways to get out of uh, disadvantage. And so one thing I can practice is dash back, upward angled, forward tilt. This will stuff out people that try to jump on my shield. Jump on my shield and just kind of chase me down. I can also use um, retreating back air to catch people so that if they're faster than me, I have this to stuff them out. So really, it's important to have a goal once you go into training mode or else you might feel lost as many people do feel in training mode. And so if you have a goal, you'll know what you're working towards and trying to figure out. And so I want to figure out how to better my disadvantage state so that I'm not getting comboed to Kingdom Come by sorties or any kind of combo heavy characters. So like I said, specifically practicing retreating back air, um, retreating upward angle forward tilt, these kind of things. Just because it will help me in real game scenarios. And so then also, one of the best things you can do in training mode is theory crafting. Theory crafting just means you go into training mode and you say, hey, I have this idea, I wanna see if it works. And it's great because you can discover new things with your character that maybe you didn't know would work before. For example, I recently discovered this combo, which can be very difficult to pull off, but deals a, a good amount of damage in a couple of moves. So just by messing around in training mode, I was able to theorycraft a simple combo that does 
In a real game situation, it might be pretty hard to get that set up, but there's situations where I'm up on a platform and they'll shield below me where I throw a grenade, down throw, and then I just grab them and up throw. And so it's just finding ways to do these different things. So during theory crafting, you can think of combos or different situations and just test them out. For example, a couple months back, I had the theory craft of doing up throw into instant double jump Nair. It seemed like a really good option at zero and a really good mix up. But the thing is, I wasn't sure if it would actually work or if it's true or if it frame trap. So going into training mode, you can set it to CPU level nine and try it out. Because obviously if it's not true or frame trap, they'll get out of it. So as you can see, if I do the up throw Nair, the CPU isn't getting out of it. However, if I try it again, So as you can see, when I tried it again, my timing was a little off and I wasn't able to get that full jump in there with the Nair. He was able to air dodge out of it. And that way I know, okay, that won't work unless I have specific timing or it's a mix up. As you can see, he's air dodging away. So that way I know it's not true. And if I want to use it in an actual match, it'll just have to be a mix up for my opponent where they don't expect the up throw. And so this is why theory crafting is so important because you can find things that work or maybe don't work, but it's cool because you can implement them and see what works and what doesn't. And so now, once you've found something that does work, that's when you just need to throw in a bunch of repetitions over and over and over again. At 0%, Banjo has a combo string that starts with forward air and combos into forward tilt, grab, or dash attack. So now that I know that this works and this is a true confirm, this is where I just need to practice, practice, practice. Because you can see right there, it was not true. And my opponent could have air dodged out of it or picked an option to escape. And so I need to just keep practicing and doing this repetitively. So it is ingrained in my brain and I know the timing and I know what will hit, what won't. So if I mess up a combo, I won't pursue and get myself into disadvantage or give up stage control. And another important thing about this too, is I've learned that the only way this is true from forward air into dash attack is if I use a C stick for dash attack. If I try using forward air and then use the A button to try to get a dash attack, it won't register quick enough and I won't be able to get the true combo. So I've learned that I have to use a C-Stick to be able to get this true combo, or else it won't be true, and once again, the combo won't start. So once you practice this, and I mean really practice, as in hours upon hours of practice, because that's the only way that you can get this stuff down. That's the only way I learned egg ladders, that's the only way I learned egg cancels. It's just by practice, practice, practice. Next step comes integrating it into your game. As I've mentioned before, you want to set the CPU to level 9. That way, after you've practiced all these different combos and different theory crafting, you can set them to just play like a level 9 CPU and then try these different combos against them. And yes, a CPU is very different from an actual player, but CPUs have better habits. They will attack almost everything and their jumping will be very consistent. They're not going to go for any crazy dumb options and so it'll allow you to practice different things that would honestly be easier on, on people. Like jab locks, for example, or follow-ups, because they will automatically try to get out of these things. So setting it Captain Falcon to level nine allows me to play in a real game situation. And I can then test if forward air into dash attack is true. And right there you can see, I was able to get forward air into forward tilt. And what's great in this situation is you can reset it every time and then just keep practicing. Just keep practicing that one combo, but in a real fast-paced situation. And once again, right there, I was able to get it again, a forward air into dash attack. And we reset again so that I can practice getting the combo again and the timing. So I can be ready for real live situations. And so when you set the CPU to this level nine, you're able to practice your combos that you found, your theory crafting, and really see if it's practical and that you could actually use it in a real match. Because maybe you find some cool stuff, a zero to death or a zero to 90 combo, 
But if it will never work in a real life situation, there's no reason trying to implement it because it really is not possible. Practice against level nine CPU is really effective and allows you to practice these combos instantly in training mode and able to catch the combo meter to see if that was actually true or not, or if it was a fluke. The best practice will still be against another human being, whether that be online or offline, preferably offline, because that way you're able to actually get the real timings down that you practice in training mode, while online there will be some delay. And if you go into training mode with a friend and they're controlling the CPU, you guys will be able to play in real time and test the combo meter. And that way you're able to practice integrating this stuff in slowly, little by little, until you can find if this is a real key piece that will help your neutral and your overall gameplay. Training mode has so many uses and is really effective when you have a goal in mind of what you want to accomplish. Sometimes it can be hard to know what you're trying to accomplish, what you want to do, but you just have to find that. Do VOD reviews, ask someone for advice, or just find holes in your gameplay that can be patched. Really, training mode is not the greatest option to practice things. It's not the greatest training mode in any finding game, but it's sufficient enough to help you get to know your character even more. Spend a couple of minutes in training mode every day, or just a couple of minutes of training mode before tournaments or playing with friends. Just try to find ways to get that practice in to where you can find what works best for you. Leave a comment down below of what you're going to practice next in training mode and make sure to drop a like on the video. The YouTube algorithm really likes likes and comments. But until next time guys.